Hello YouTube and welcome back to Lonely Riders channel. Today we're going to take a break from the Z1000 for a little bit and we're going to look at the Jixer. Lonely Rider is not a professional mechanic and is not responsible for any personal injury or vehicle damage that may result from individuals attempting the repair shown in this video. You have been warned. Try to run risk. As you saw in my last video, I just got this bike last week and it's not running good at all. The dealership that I bought it from had tried changing spark plugs and the coils and basically they just focused on the ignition system, but I suspect that something else is the problem. First, there's no power commander. Second, we have a muffler that's not really much of a muffler. I'm all about the loud pipe save lives thing, don't get me wrong, but this thing is loud. I mean, it's like straight piped monster truck loud. We're gonna put an actual exhaust system on the bike. Third, we still have the factory narrowband O2 sensor, which is bad. The reason that's bad is as long as that O2 sensor is there, the computer is going to use that sensor to try to reach Stoich, which is about 14.7 on the AF gauge. That's the opposite direction that we want to go. The more lean you get, the worse the engine's going to run. We want to go more towards 13.1 to 13.0. You have to get rid of that O2 sensor. Now, you can't just unhook it. If you do that, you're going to get the annoying FI light on the gauge cluster. So what you have to do is you have to take it off and replace it with a, essentially a bypass plug or an eliminator plug, and that basically keeps you from getting the FI light. Now, this one's from Brock performance but there are other brands out there as well there's all different kinds of companies that make them by removing that o2 sensor you're going to essentially force the computer to turn to its default map for the fuel injection system which is where the power commander comes in because then you can take the power commander from there and adjust the fuel map to your liking and it looks like the set valve in the exhaust is also still connected which is also bad and lastly they did not block off the pair valve so we're gonna have to block those off to be able to tune the bike with our own oxygen sensor anyway so yeah there's a lot of things wrong with this bike but don't worry We'll get her fixed up. There, there. There, there. It's okay. It's okay. So, we got a total care package. What do we got here? Let's take a look. We've got tag lights. That's boring. We have a Dynojet Power Commander Series 5. So we got the Power Commander 5. We got the uh, Eliminator plug for the O2 sensor. And we have a Yoshimura slip-on. This is the mid pipe. It is a Yoshimura 14 inch R77 and it will look sweet on this bike and it will definitely sound better than that dang thing. To begin, we're gonna have to remove the fairings on both sides of the bike. Now to remove the fairing, you're gonna wanna start by taking off the three screws here, here, and that one down there. With those three screws out, now you're gonna wanna take off this plastic clip right here. It's one of those pop out style ones. And there's also one underneath here as well. With all the hardware removed, now the only thing holding it on are plastic uh, pins that are in rubber boots that just pull off. One of the plastic pins is here, the other one is here, and then there's one down here. And there's also one down in there holding these two pieces of plastic together. So what that's actually doing is that is holding together this piece of plastic to this piece of plastic. So what I do is I try to get my hand in between the two to kind of help me push them apart. And then I'll get my other hand in from the top and I'll try to use both of my hands to pop that one. So you want to grab up here and pull right here. Then you want to pull right here. The last pesky one is that one right there. So you gotta try to pull that one off without breaking anything. When you have a machine this old with perfect plastics, you always wanna put a towel down to make sure just in case it falls, you don't scratch it all up. Kinda use my right hand in here and my left hand up here, and I just kinda pull on it right here. <sighs> Whew. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side. So again, you're pretty much gonna do the same thing on this side. You're gonna take off the three screws, one there, one there, and this one is right there take those off now we already took the bottom clip off so in this case the only clip we have to take off is that one now on this side there are only three plastic pins instead of four there's one here there's one here and there's just the one here there isn't anything down here then you just got to get these plastic clips right here to come apart you just got to pop those off Okay, now this plug right here is for the kickstand sensor. This one down here is for the O2 sensor in the exhaust. So we're going to want to unhook that and pull that apart. We're going to grab a hold of this and unhook it. And then we're going to get our bypass plug and plug it in there. Next, we got to take these mounting bolts off. 
with that bracket off, now we have to loosen the exhaust clamp. It looks like that's a 10 millimeter. Now we should be able to yank this thing off. I have to take the rear wheel off? Really? Okay, I did what I really didn't want to have to do. I had to loosen the rear wheel, push it forward, pop the chain off so that I could move the wheel back far enough to get this muffler off. If you've ever wondered what an exhaust valve looks like, they're really just a butterfly valve that just turns, opens and closes. And it's spring loaded and it has the cables running to a servo motor mounted up inside the bike that opens and closes it based on engine RPM. But what we're gonna do so we're going to unhook the cables and we're just going to leave the thing all the way open. Now we're going to install the mid pipe. This mid pipe is supposed to install like this and then once you slide it on that bracket is supposed to mount right there but it looks like somebody took a looks like they just took a sawzall and just sawzall whatever piece of the frame was here to mount the exhaust onto to get that muffler on there. So I'm going to have to find some other way of securing this on here, but I'll figure that out later. Okay, here's all the hardware. We have a heat shield, we have a new exhaust clamp, which we're going to put on the mid pipe. We have the muffler clamp, and we also have a low volume insert and all the necessary springs. So take your new exhaust clamp, slide it on there, go ahead and get it close to being snug so it don't flop around all over the place. We'll go ahead and slide it on. Might take some convincing, but we got it on. And now we're going to tighten the exhaust clamp. I'm going to go ahead and put the wheel back where it was now while the muffler is not in the way. I already made a video of how to do this with the Z1000, so I'm not going to bother going back through all that. And here's the big moment. Isn't it beautiful? Putting this rubber seal in, I find it's easier to actually start with one of these cutouts and then work both directions so you know you got it in the right spot. And yes, putting these rubber seals on is really annoying. And there it is. Now we're going to take the muffler up, kind of, kind of slide the clamp into position just by eyeballing it, and then we're going to slide the pipe on. It should bolt on just like that. But I'm of course missing my bolts, so I'm going to have to find a bolt that will work. It looks like they put a sharpie mark on the uh, passenger side foot pegs with the intention of just hacking those off at some point. Thank goodness they didn't, or I'd have to figure out something else. Here are the springs, and here's the spring puller tool. Okay, take a spring in the puller, put one side in, put the puller on the other end, and then pull it down until it clips on to the other pipe. And now the heat shield. Much better. We got the exhaust on, we got the O2 eliminator plug in. It's actually getting pretty late right now, so I'm probably gonna call it done for the day, and I will revisit this tomorrow. Okay, I'm back. Next, I'm going to be removing these cables for the exhaust valve. But to work in here, we're gonna have to take off this cover in the seat, and it looks like the screw on this side is missing, so. Yeah, nice neat little things you find whenever you buy a used bike. And with those two screws out, the seat just lifts off. With that screw out, these plastic pieces come off by pulling them this way. Don't pull them straight out. If you try to pull them straight out, you're gonna break off the clip in there. Grab a hold of the back of it and pull it backwards. And since we're gonna lift the gas tank up, we're gonna go ahead and remove one on the other side as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and lift the gas tank up and see what we can see. To do that, you just remove this bolt and the whole thing should lift up on that hinge. Okay, well, it looks like the uh, the gas tank rod is missing, which is normally right there, and I cannot find it anywhere, so I had to use an alternate method for now. Don't laugh at me. Okay, now on the uh, 750 that I had, and uh, most of the 750s and 600s that I know of, the uh, servo motor for the exhaust valve was mounted in the tail on this side. But on the 1000, at least the 07s and the 08s, it's actually mounted right there. And that's where the cables are going. So that's to the exhaust valve. So what we got to do is we got to get rid of that motor and take those cables off. So we're just going to loosen these up and pop these cables off. 
And that's one off. And there's the last one. Looks like it's just two bolts holding it on. Bolt on that side and a bolt on that side, but it looks like it's gonna be a pain to get into. Okay, it looks like there's actually enough room on the plastic part to actually get a small socket on. So I'm gonna get this side with the socket wrench. Um, if you have one of these swivel tips, it will make your life a lot easier. Okay, that bolt was easy. And now the other side, the other side here is a completely different story. It looks like I might be able to get in there. I got my socket on it, but as you can see, like I said, having one of those swivel tips really makes uh, your life easier. See how I had to bend it in there to get to it. Um, you might be able to get straight through here if you just have a straight rod, but having that swivel tip definitely, definitely helps out. I'm gonna have to put a wrench on this side to keep the bolt on this end from turning while I'm turning the ratchet. Now I'm gonna to try to thread off that nut without letting it drop down into the bike. Gotcha. And then pull the bolt out from this side. There we go. Got it. Find the, uh, find the plugs where the servo plugs in right there and disconnect both of those. I'm gonna unhook the cables and pull them out one at a time because that looks like that's just gonna be easier to do. Whew. There it is. All right, now you have two plugs on the ECU. You have a gray one and you have a black one or a clutch side and a throttle side if you wanna think of it that way. On the black one, okay, throttle side. You count on the top top row of wires, you count from the left to the right, okay, and you count five. That wire has to get pulled out of that harness or snipped, whichever you want to do, and that will keep the FI light from coming on in the gauge cluster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the plug so it's just a little easier to work with. And these are really hard to get off, by the way. I use a screwdriver, and I push the button down with my finger, and I pry it up with a screwdriver just to get it to kind of break loose a little bit and then I can yank it off the rest of the way. Whew. Whew. Tight fit, okay. Okay, now I'm gonna show you which wire you have to pull, okay? It's on the top row. We're gonna count from the left to the right. You ready? One, two, three, four, five. That one right there, the black one with the white stripe. That's the one you have to pull out of the harness. So now I'm going to take my pliers, I'm going to grab a hold of that wire, the one I showed you, and I'm just going to pull the pin out of the harness. Okay, then we're going to plug the harness back in, which is a lot harder than it sounds. You have to kind of tilt it down to get it started. and then push it on. Now to make sure we did it correctly we're gonna just turn the bike on real quick to do a test start and make sure the FI light does not come on. No FI light. That's it for today's episode. Next time we are going to install the Power Commander 5, the Canon air filter, and also block off the pair system. So till next time, catch you guys later.